So uh, I guess to kind of warm it up, we're going to talk a little bit about our first KubeCon. Uh, my first KubeCon was in 2017, where it snowed in Austin. And so I'm waiting, and so I'm waiting for some disaster to happen in LA. Please disappoint me, because I really don't want to have to like, you know, walk through a snowstorm or a hailstorm again. So in 2017, I actually made some great friends, and I'm still in touch with them to, to, to today. Whoa, sorry, you guys are a little intimidating being up here in front of the first time after so many KubeCons. Um, but one thing I remember from 2017 is I remember seeing so many people be on the main stage. And I was like, wow, I want to know how I can get on the main stage. And I thought, if they could do it, so can I. And kind of like the pinch me moment of, I am here in front of everyone, right? And we're all here after 18 months. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Feels like five years of COVID isolation. So thank you, everyone. Awesome. So my KubeCon was in 2018 in Seattle, um, very rainy, um, as you probably would guess. But I remember being on a panel talking about how you can avoid the weeds within the cloud native landscape. And after I got off the panel, I met none other than Constance back in 2018. And here we are now sharing the stage about to give project updates. So really, really crazy. Um, so it's really important that everyone is kind to the people you meet and are just very nice, because you never know. You could be up here one day giving project updates with somebody you meet at this KubeCon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so speaking of project updates, we're going to talk first about the ones that have moved from in to incubation from Sandbox. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right, so what does moving from Sandbox to incubation mean? It means that these projects are now from early innovators to early adopters on the chasm. The first one we're going to talk about is Cilium, which secures network connectivity and load balances between applications. Next, Kata, which is a Kubernetes-based support, a driven autoscaler. Flux, a continuous and progressive delivery solution for Kubernetes that, are, that is open and extensible. And Crossplane, which is the Kubernetes add-on that enables platform teams to assemble infrastructure from multiple vendors. This exposes high-level APIs, which makes for an amazing developer experience, something I care a lot about. Last, OpenTelemetry. Constance is going to tell us more in-depth details about this later, but it's a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs that instrument, generate, generate, collect, and export telemetry data with the goal of understanding software behavior and performance. These movements bring the total number of projects that, is, that are incubating to 24, and we know that it takes a lot of hard work and collaboration within the community to mature these projects. So kudos to the teams that made this a reality. We thank you for your dedication. I'm going to say, hold off the applauses, because there's a lot of things to celebrate, and so we'll actually have a dedicated clapping slide at the end. <laughs> um, so one of the things we want to celebrate is Linkerd moving to graduation. Linkerd is a service mesh for Kubernetes, and it makes running services easier and safer by giving you runtime debugging, observability, reliability, and security, all without requiring any code changes. It's pretty awesome. Now, let's talk about... Um, open telemetry. Uh, this project is near and dear to my heart. So a little bit about the goals, and uh, that's why I'll, the project updates will make a little more sense. Open telemetry seeks to make high quality telemetry a built in feature for all cloud native software. Open telemetry provides a well factored set of components which allows applications and OSS libraries to instrument themselves once and then send the data anywhere and in any format. And so we're taking a new approach. Um, to durability by integrating tracing metrics and logs into a single stream of structured, correlated keyword data. Now, there are two parts of open telemetry. There's the instrumentation and the collection. And so, uh, over the past several months, more recently, uh, we've GA'd uh, the 1.0 of tracing. Now, what does GA mean to you? It means two big things. One is that there's long-term backwards compatibility for distributed tracing. And we now have OTEL, native open telemetry protocol, implementation and support. So it is available in Java.net, Python, Go, and the collector for 1.0, and there are betas for Ruby, JS, Swift, Erlang, and more along the way. Similar, since we're talking about all three, I guess, the pillars, if you want to say, there's beta uh, metrics. We are in beta for that, so if you have an opportunity to use the metrics uh, SDKs APIs, please use them and give us your feedback. 
Now, one thing I'm really happy about with the nuclear ability space is there's a lot of cross-project initiatives. And so one thing, two things I want to highlight here is one, there's a Prometheus interoperability. So we're fully compliant, so is fully compliant remote right, working toward, and we're working towards ability. Another thing is that we're working towards full compatibility with open metrics. Now our logs is, uh, the specification is work is get started, it's in beta. And to know more actually what these things mean, please check out our status page. And as you're gonna hear from every project we talk to is that we want your feedback. So especially within the open telemetry sp scope, we want your feedback on models, instrumentation, and metrics beta. Awesome, so the next project we're gonna give a few details on is Flux, which, as I mentioned earlier, is a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes. So recently, GitOps offerings for cloud vendors was introduced, along with server-side apply. So server-side apply brings improved CPU, memory, and network performance, which reduces the number of calls to the Kubernetes API. Another huge win for the Flux projects were, project was stable APIs. It's very, stability is very important, um, so that's really, really great. Um, drift detection was also introduced between desired state and cluster state reliability. Um, this is awesome because that means that users can wait for all of the applied resources to become ready without the need for health checks. Want to know more about Flux? Check out the Flux ecosystem event on October 20th. Next is Fifi Spire. So Spiffy Aspire is a software project that implements a tool chain and APIs for establishing trust between software systems across a wide variety of hosting platforms. There are three cool updates to say. First one is the SDKs, new SDKs and APIs. This allows for users to easily integrate and test new plugins and automation code. It comes with docs, examples, and test frameworks, which makes me really happy that you know, we're thinking about the end user and the adoption. I really love this. The next thing is our Kubernetes controllers. Now, uh, this allows for uh, people to use, consume, so he's Fifi Spire, kind of a tongue twister when you put those two back to back, via pure Kubernetes API interactions. This means you don't actually need to interact with Spire. And this is what it really means to you is that you don't actually need to understand the in-depth mechanisms to leverage this project. Once again, thinking about the ease of use and the adopters. And the last project update here is serverless platforms. So there's support for this. And now um, they can deliver cryptographic workload identities, such as certificates, JWTs, uh, to ser serverless workloads to cloud platforms like AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions. This also allows for serverless workloads to securely communicate back into workloads running elsewhere, such as your basement, different cloud, anywhere. One of the end users of Spiffy Spire, a Square, wrote a really interesting blog post on how to use it to authenticate to AWS API. And the spoiler, is they're able to do it without any modifications. And now I want to say this is the fun fact, is that the world's largest Spire deployment now exceeds the size of the, size of the largest Kubernetes deployment. And that is some food for thought. It's really cool. So our last in-depth update is for Linkerd. So the biggest news, I think, is that this project's graduated. So yeah. that's super exciting. Um, another introduction was an authorization policy, which allows users to easily enforce which types of connections are allowed within a cluster based on TLS identity. Also, benchmark results show that Linkerd is dramatically faster than Istio, which is another great win for this project. All right, if you want to get involved with Linkerd, check out Linkerd.io. Now, we would love to talk about all of the updates from the projects within the ecosystem, but we'd probably be here all day yeah. doing that. So we're gonna have some lightning round project updates, starting with gRPC. So gRPC is a modern high-performance procedure call framework that can be run in any, any environment. They recently introduced retries and session affinity, which basically means that your service abilities are improved, right? You can enable, enable your gRPC applications to retry outbound requests according to policy, which can be helpful if your endpoints are flaky or slow. Next one is Prometheus. It's an open source systems monitoring and alerting toolkit. They have added high resolution histograms. And the intent of this feature is to solve problems like errors in quantile estimation. I think that's pretty cool. Let me just adjust my glasses for that. <laughs> and they also launched the Prometheus Conformance Program. The PCP, as it's called, enables end users to determine which projects, products, services are truly compatible with Prometheus. And this prevents fragmentation of the market, increases interoperability, ensures reliability, and is backed by a fully open source test. Testing, love it. 
And to quote uh, Richie directly from what he shared with us for the project updates, you'll be pleasantly surprised by um, the updated contribution guidelines, so please check it out. All right, next up is Vitness. Um, so Vitness is a database solution for deploying, scaling, and managing large clusters of open source databases. Um, the quick fire update here is that they introduce improvements such as shorter latencies and reduced CPU memory usage for serving queries. So this means that systems can deliver more throughput while lowering hardware and cloud costs. I love saving money, so cool. Next one is FluentD. It is an ecosystem of tools to start, solve logs, collection, and processing in containerized environments. Now, kind of a spoiler, right? I was talking about the observability space. It is no longer just for logs. There's first class integration with OpenMetrics and Prometheus and plans for open telemetry. Please give this integration a try and always, as always, share your experience. All right, last but certainly not least is the core DNS update. So, this, this is a flexible DNS server that provides, among other things, service discovery in Kubernetes clusters. The core DNS team has moved more DNS functionality to plugins, like the new zone transfer plugin. They're also working on an ACME plugin, which is going to automate certificate management through the ACME protocol. All right. So now, you may, uh, now we can celebrate applause, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, Remember to check out the rest of the projects for the latest scoop, and don't forget to attend the maintainer sessions throughout the week to get more in-depth information about what's going on there. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Awesome.